Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another BJ and Co. Terraria video. That's right guys, we are back after a long hiatus. We are here in Terraria again, providing you with some more fun guides to help you in your adventure. You guys were so supportful with the wonderful Getting Started in Terraria guide that we put out that we would... We, wa we wanted to get, give more good content for you guys. So today what we're going to be looking at is all the different NPCs in Terraria, along with the requirements to get them, what they can drop, what they will do for you in the world. So we're going to go through each one individually. If you want, they'll be in the description timestamps to look at each of the different ones because there's some you might already have, not be worried about. You might be looking, oh, how do I get that Goblin Tinker? What do I need to do? So you can grab that down in the description. And uh, yeah, if you guys see this before April 26, 2007, we are on a hunt for subscribers. My birthday is coming up on the 26th and we want to hit that 500 mark before then. A nice little birthday present for me. So if you guys want to support us, if you just want to give me something nice for my birthday, hit that subscribe button and we'd love to have it. And you can always hit that little bell too to get notified of when our new content goes live if you really enjoy the stuff. But let's get on in this. You want the good stuff. So first things first. The guide here, you get it on starting the world. Simple, easy. If he dies, he comes back if, as long as you've got... Actually, I think he comes back no matter what, which is kind of awesome. He is pretty simple. He gives you some help, some tips that you can get. But what he's most important for is this crafting thing, which is quite usable. Um, all you need to do is put a item. Let's take the glowing mushroom in here. If we stick it in the material here, it will show you every single item that can be made using this as a possible, as one of the ingredients. And you can see, oh, I want to make a mushroom sofa. I need five glowing mushrooms and two silk. I want to make the shroomite bar. I need chlorophyte and glowing mushrooms. So it's so handy to see, hey, I've got this new item. What can I all do with it? Hey, this soul of night drop from the boss I just beat. What can I do with it? What can I make with it? Oh, there's these cool weapons. Let's make the spirit flame or the magical harp or the demon wings so it's kind of a neat way to help you try to progress throughout the world but that is what he does next we have the merchant here um the merchant is shows up once you have a combined 50 silver in all the inventories of the players in the world uh he sells basic tools and supplies oh and as i miss guys if uh, your guide is named andrew there's a 100% chance that when he dies, he drops a green cap, which is a cool cool little item that you might not usually get your hands on. But yeah, back to the merchant. So basic tools and supplies. And he, you will need a house space built for him. Uh, we'll do another video that talks about NPC houses in Terraria and what you need for them. You can see here I've got some very simple ones just to keep them all nice and close together here. But yeah, there'll be a link in the card and in the description on how to get to that if you want more information on that. But so yeah, you need a house, you need the 50 silver between all the inventories, and he will show up in your world. He sells all sorts of fun stuff here. And what we've got, a lot of what you see here is available right off the beginning. We've got the mining helmet, the piggy bank, iron anvil in your always for PC or mobile at switches. Bug net is always available. We've got the copper items always available on desktop and console mobile it switches between copper and tin depending on what's in your world torches the potions the arrows the shuriken the rope those are always available to you then there's a neat one called the marshmallow it's a building block that can be obtained for one silver if he's living in the snow biome so kind of a neat little you can move move his house around see what's going on there during the blood moon he will sell a throwing knife at night as you can see here he will sell a glow stick if skeleton's been defeated you can grab the safe which is similar to the piggy bank but uh gives you more space to store things there if you need uh if you're on mobile randomly he will sell all the iron weapons and uh tools which is kind of cool so the short sword broadsword iron pickaxe hammer and bow once you defeated the wall of flesh you can get the disco ball from him if you have a flare gun, he will sell the flares for you. Sickle is always available on desktop and on console and mobile, it's available during Halloween. Gold dust shows up once you have beaten the wall of flesh. If you have the nail gun on console or on desktop, you can get nails for it. Um, once in on mobile, if you've defeated a hard mode boss, you can buy greater mana and greater healing potions, which is pretty friggin' sweet, I must say. Also on console, what, during Blood Moons, you can get poison knives, which are that sounds pretty cool. I've never played with those before. 
Uh, desktop, during Halloween, you can buy the tax collector suit, which unfortunately I don't have here to show you. And mobile, then, there's some fun other things on other holidays. So we've got Valentine's Day gives you a Valentine's ring. Oktoberfest gives you the Weisenbrau. The Thanksgiving gives you a turkey feather. And Valentine's gives you a heart arrow. So lots of fun, different things can be picked up from the merchant. And very easy to obtain. He's kind of got all this standard stuff that will keep you going. Easy, ni always nice to buy an anvil. Great to have the pea banks going on. Bug nets great if you like to do fishing. Health potions, mana regen potions are great, and you can never have too much rope. Just saying. So that is what how to get the merchant and what he does for you. Next, we are on to the nurse. So the nurse, guys. This is another very early on NPC that you'll get. In order to do this, you need to have an empty house, and somebody's health on the world has to be increased by using at least one life crystal, which most people are hunting life crystals in this game, so you should have that fairly early on. And you have to already have the merchant. So kind of you see a nice little progression here as we go. The nurse is great in that you can heal, and she'll heal your health as well as get rid of your any active debuffs that you have for a small price, which is kind of cool. It's pretty easy. It's usually not not too too expensive so she's just good to heal there is also an achievement tied to getting healed from the nurse so kind of a very handy thing to do is get those heals going on from her early on in the game so you can unlock those achievements so the achievement is called frequent flyer guys and it is for spending over one gold in getting treated by the nurse so that's quite significant that's ten thousand coppers so and most of the time she'll cost you between you know a little over silver to some copper to get healed from her so that'll take quite a while but if you get on it that'll be good so that's it for the nurse guys so let's head on to the demolitionist that's this this wonder one looks like a dwarf and he's called gimli i freaking love it freaking love it that's so amazing so this guy as you can guess is going to be evolved with explosives in some regard so this guy you need to have um an empty house as with all the NPCs here mainly. You need to have explosives in your inventory, which is, you know, dynamite, grenades, bombs, any of that fun stuff. And you must already have the merchant going on. Now this guy sells you all sorts of fun stuff. So we're gonna open him up and take a look and see what we've got right now. So the three things that are always available from him are grenades, bombs, and dynamites, which is always fun if you wanna get some bombing going on grenades are fun in fights um bombs just if you want some fast mining great for dealing with meteorites and stuff and you can always throw the gels onto them to make them sticky which is easy mining early on and he has the dynamite as well once you've hit hard mode he starts to sell the high hellfire arrows which are pretty decent 15 range damage um better than a lot of well it is definitely better than all the early early on arrows that you can be making by that point so starting into hard mode that's a great pickup uh, after defeating Plant Terra and a Pirate Invasion, you can start getting the Landmines, which explode when they step on, so that's a fun one that you can deal with. In Hard Mode, you can also get the Explosive Powder. Not entirely sure what that one does yet. Let's take a quick peek here before I can get on. And that's to make Exploding Bullets. Mm, that sounds like fun. Gonna have to test that one out at some point. Uh, he also sells you, during Christmas, a Roman Candle. After defeating the solar eclipses, he will sell you bouncy bombs. However, there is a little bit of a note where multiplayer servers, this seems to be slightly glitched and it doesn't necessarily sell on those. And sorry, the Roman candle is only available on mobile, unfortunately. And then we've got two more only available on mobile is after defeating King Slime and Two Core the Ungrateful. You get a holy hand grenade. Love the freaking shout out to Worms there. That's some good old times. And then after defeating the Golem on mobile, you can get the Stinger Bolt. So, there's some cool ones that, of course, you can't see here because I haven't done it. I've tried, I've progressed this world basically as far as I can, but there's certain situational things that you're not going to see in the inventory. So, great early on. Again, he's very easy to get. All you got to do is find a chest or some pots that have a bomb in it and have a house. And boom, Demolitious will show up and you can really speed up things and have some fun against some bosses with that. So, that's it for him. Next, we are going to be heading on to our wonderful die trader. So this is our die trader here, the, the wonderful guy with the little, little turban and stuff here. This is another one uh, similar to the guide, how it had a drop on it. it. When the die trader dies, though you can't kill your NPCs usually, which is kind of interesting, so you gotta find other means to do so, he's got a 12.5% chance of dropping an exotic scimitar, which is uh, so a neat way to get those different items that are harder to obtain in the game. And this one is, his requirements to get are empty house, you must have a strange plant, plant acquired and in somebody's inventory, or one of the pre-hard mode bosses have been beaten, which is Eye of Cthulhu, Eater Worlds, or Brain of Cthulhu, or Skeletron. Or 
Additionally, the player must have any material used to craft dye in their inventory. Example, a yellow mary goat. Strange plants almost also count, which is why it kind of matches how usually people will pick him up once they've got a strange plant. So this guy, he does two, two sorts of things. You can turn your strange plants in for all sorts of cool dyes. Some really, really neat ones come out of there, like the negative dyes and um, different rainbow colored ones. And you can have lots of fun turning into strange plants here for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. And then in his shop, he also sells a few things for you. A couple things that he's always selling for you are the silver die and the die vat. So you can make your own dies if you want and just a very standard one. On the multiplayer servers, you also get a team die which uh, dyes you the color of the team that you're on. During Halloween, he sells Die Trader Robe and Die Trader's Turban, which is kind of cool. During Full Moons, he can sell the Shadow and Negative Die. So just kind of lucked out in times for this. And as always available is the Brown Die. Now, um, the Shadow, Negative, and Brown Die are only console specific. So I'm sorry for those of you guys, or not console, desktop specific. So those of you on console and mobile, um, sorry. Um, strange plants there are a ton of different rewards from it um, a bunch there's a stash room that are always available and then there's some that unlock only after you defeated hard mode mechanical bosses plantera martian madness and the moon lord so kind of you want to progress your way up there and uh, maybe even hold on if you've got a bunch of the early ones or nothing's tickling your fancy you can always hold on to them and see what they can get later once you've defeated some more bosses. But that's it for the die trader. On to the dryad. So this lovely green lady here is our dryad, guys. And the requirements for this one are you must have an empty house. And one of the following bosses has to be defeated. Which is either Eye of Cthulhu, Eater of Worlds, Brain of Cthulhu, or Skeletron. So that's pretty easy. I mean, you're, you're going to be going after one of those bosses very early on. Uh, hopefully. Because you want to you progress and get to, the, get to the stronger things in the world. So... This one is another character that does two things. You can get status from it, which will tell you how much hollow and corrupt or crimson there is in the world. So kind of neat to keep tabs on that because those do start spreading on you and you want to be careful. When enemies come around, she also gives you a Dryad's Blessing buff, which is pretty cool. It grants plus eight defense, which is pretty cool. And enemies that hit you will take damage, which is pretty sweet. And they'll take damage if they're in the real, the ring that's around, which is kind of cool because it shoots this big green ring out and around for you to see, which is really, really neat. Um, probably one of my favorite characters with the versatility that she has in terms of helping you out, hurting enemies a little bit. So it's fun to have her close by the fights. And then the in the shop, she sells all sorts of fun things for you. So a few things that are always available are the things like the acorn, the um, dirt rod, if you want to get some dirt going on there, the pumpkin seeds, the flower walls here, and the grass wall. And then we've got some other stuff. So the purification powder is sold anytime that you're not in a blood moon. During the blood moon, you will see either a vile powder or a vicious powder, depending if you're in a uh, corrupt or a crimson world. While not in a blood moon, you'll also always see grass seeds, which is kind of handy. And then during a blood moon, you will see corrupt or crimson seeds, which are very handy to have. So definitely just picking those up if you get a chance. Um, if, especially if you're trying to do a lot of potion making. They're not the easiest to come across. And then while not in a blood moon, you get sunflowers, which can be put down to kind of stop the spread of things at the same time, which is always nice. Once you hit hard mode, you can get the lovely jungle wall here as I pick some up myself. Sorry. Um, and then also you get the hollow seeds in jungle and you can get her to sell mushroom seeds if you're in a mushroom biome like i've got her right now just because i got my my lovely truffle up above uh during halloween you can get what's called the dryad coverings and dryad loincloth which is kind of cool and then if you want to do some plantings um these planter boxes come alive so you can make all sorts of fun farms that look pretty and have specific planters for all of these. Now, the planters are interesting in that they say they're for specific plants, but you can plant other stuff in them. It's not the end of the world. The day bloom you get after King Slime's been defeated. Queen Bee unlocks the Moon Go Planter. Eye of Cthulhu unlocks Blink Root. Eater of Worlds unlocks Deathweed. Brain of Cthulhu unlocks the Crimson, which of course I don't have on this world because I've got the Deathweed one. After Skeletron's defeated, you see both the Water Leaf and the Silver Thorn. And the Fire Blossom Planter Block shows up after you've defeated the Wall of Plant. Wall of Flesh. And then a fun one on console and mobile is 
once you've hit hard mode, if you have a blood moon going on, come talk to her because you get some sparkly wings, which are super handy. Wings are nice. They're always good to have in the repertoire if you can. They give you a ton of versatility. So they're probably not some of the best wings in the game, just at a first glance and how easy they are to get. But uh, they're wings nonetheless, and one you can pick up pretty early on into hard mode instead of having to craft the higher tier ones. So that's what to do. So that is our Dryad, guys, and we're now going to move on to our next guy. All right, guys, so our next one, this is a desktop only specific, and this is one of the, well, this is the newest NPC in the game right now. This is the Tavern Keep. Uh, he was brought in with the Dungeon Defenders crossover, which is super fun. So he will, you can find him after you've defeated either Worlds or Brain of Cthulhu. That's the only criteria. He will show up unconscious somewhere in the world, and he can be anywhere. He can be right up on the, the grass at the top, or he can be all the way down into hell. Any layer is possible and uh, you just have to talk to him and he will claim a house and respawn whenever he dies he is a uh, interesting one because you can use the eternia crystal to get um, the crystals and the stand in order to start the dungeon defenders um, content which is the old ones army event and then in his shop he's got all sorts of fun stuff here related to that event uh, he does as you'll as you'll notice here guys his prices are all in metals uh he's well besides the ale and the crystals and the crystal stand which near you need to spawn the event these two and the ale is just a consumable to get get a nice old buff here but everything else requires dungeon defenders metals now everything that he has in here is like i said is related to the event so everything over here are all rods that are used to summon the traps to defeat the army you can still fight the army as you're going through it but all the traps are spawned here and then everything over here is just clothing items and sets that will give you boosts against the the thing so that some let you have more traps up at once some let you i believe have less um cost to summoning the weapons in terms of the crystals that you need so all handy stuff to take on the old ones army which is a it's a fun kind of wave tower defense game that a it's a neat little change of pace for Terraria. I quite enjoy it. And it can be a fun thing to farm up early game to have those defend defender medals ready to go so you can buy some of this this fun stuff that appears. A lot of this stuff is like everything along here you will find right off the bat. And then a lot of this though will take place after a you know, after the mechanical bosses, you get this next row of rods after the um golems defeated you get the next because the dungeon defenders event actually gets stronger depending on as you get through um and the same thing on this right hand side here the stuff uh, over here shows up after the golems and defeating in here is after the mechanical bosses so definitely check back with him after times go by the tavern king does also drop he's got a 12 and percent chance of dropping the ale tosser if uh, he is killed like we said with the die trader um you can't kill him you got to find a way for him to die but another neat item that you can pick up next on to the arms dealer so here is the arms dealer guys this is another early on one that you should get that is not that hard to get your hands on pretty easy requirements here in terms of you need an empty house and the player has at least one bullet firing gun or bullet in their inventory flares and flare guns don't count or anything that's stored in a chest doesn't so you got to keep it on you but you know if you're hunting around underground you should come across a gun and, or some bullets fairly easily if he is killed he'll respawn and he will shoot with a flintlock pistol or a mini shark depending on what he's got so another good good defending one to have with you so in his inventory, what do we got, guys? Uh, so always available, you get the musket ball. Uh, during a blood moon, or always, once the wall flesh is defeated, you get the silver bullets, which are handy little bullets there for your weapons, for sure. It's a nice, nice jump from the 8 to 10 damage. Does does a lot. The unholy arrow is um, available at night after defeating the Eater of Worlds or Brain of Cthulhu, and always available after wall of flesh or during a blood moon. It's like, it's like they know you're going to need ammo during a blood moon. I like it. Always available, you also have the flintlock pistol and the mini shark. So um, depending on what, what kind of guns you like, a lot of people like the mini shark because you can just hold it and blow through it. Just try not to blow too, too many things up. At night, you he will also sell illegal gun parts, which can be used to make the mega shark. Um, after feeding the wall of flesh, you can get the shotgun. So another, another style of gunplay there if you like to just blow them straight in the face with a nice shotgun blast. Empty bullets show up after you defeated the wall of flesh and then there's a lot of specific things that he will sell depending on what you have in your 
inventory. So if you have the stinger weapon, he will sell stinger bolts. If you have the stake launcher, he'll sell stakes. If you have the nail gun, he'll sell nails. If you have the candy corn rifle, he'll sell candy corn. If you have the jack-o'-lantern launcher, you, he'll sell the explosive jack-o'-lanterns. And then during Halloween, interestingly enough, he sells the nurse's hat, shirt, and pants. Hmm, what's going on, Darnell and Caitlin? What have you guys been doing? Or are you just a cross-dresser dressing up as a nurse? Curious. Curious, curious. So that's what our arms deal has, guys. Let's uh, move on to our next one, which I believe is a potty girl. And I lied to you guys. The next one is, unfortunately, just our stylist. Not party time yet. But uh, here we've got uh, the hairstylist. This is an interesting one in that she does not there's not really requirements what you need to do is you need to find her in one of the spider nest biomes uh, she'll be entangled in cobwebs you'll talk to her and then she'll come and find move into a vacant house um the she'll, she'll she's a little bit harder to find i always suggest keeping a empty house around just so you can get the additional space for them ready to go and uh and, Easy way to help you with this is if you can get your hands on the Life Born Analyzer. She'll show up as a web stylist when she's nearby, which is kind of handy. Uh, this is another one that does drop things on desktop. And if she dies, she will drop stylish scissors with a 12.5% chance. So that's, that is a handy one there. And then what does she sell? Uh, you can click on her and you can change your hairstyle, which is kind of handy for those of you like the, like the cosmetic changes there. But then we also have a shop for her. And there's two things that she sells always, which is the hair dye remover and the depth hair dye which is a, she's got some kind of interesting stuff in here you can get the life hair dye which is not showing up here because i haven't hit it there and that's if you hit at least 400 maximum life you can get the mana hair dye if you have at least 200 maximum mana the money hair dye if you have at least a platinum in your inventory the time hair dye if the moon phase of four six or seven team hair dye if you're in a multiplayer world party if there's a party girl in your world Ooh. The, uh, if you hit high, hard mode, you can get the biome hair, which I'm not showing here. Womp, womp, womp. Um, there's also the speed hair dye if it's in hard mode and a mechanical boss has been beaten, which is this one here. And the rainbow hair dye in uh, hard mode if all three mechanical bosses have been defeated. And there's two more if you beat the Martian Madness, which is the Martian hair dye and the Twilight hair dye for desktop version. Which is kind of handy there. So that's it for the hot stylus. Just lots of, lots of pretty colors for your hair, which makes sense. That's what, that's what stylers are for. So that's where we're going to leave the first in our three-part series on our guide to NPCs within Terraria. We've gotten all the way up to the stylist in this first go, and we will take you guys through the pre-hard mode stuff next, the remainder of them, and then post-hard mode in the third episode. Links are down in the description below, and if you want to be notified when they come out, you can subscribe to the channel. See you all later.